After the camera pans across a few idle diesel locomotives during the opening credits, the movie opens with shots from two Allegheny and West Virginia Railroad AWVR, operated train yards in various parts of Pennsylvania. Children arrive at the Fuller Yard in northern Pennsylvania for a school excursion on rail safety. Chris Pine's character Will Coulson wakes up for work in the southern Pennsylvania hamlet of Stanton while secretly watching his wife put their son on the school bus. She won't even answer when he calls. When conductor Coulson arrives at work, he receives his instructions for the day and discovers he will be collaborating with engineer Frank Barnes, Denzel Washington, with whom he has never previously worked. He finds Barnes amid a group of elderly workers with whom he exchanges sharp words over their different ages. The older workers grumble about Coulson replacing them as he goes to punch in, claiming that Coulson obtained his position through family connections in the union. In Fuller, the yardmaster yells at two hostlers who are standing idle beside a train to move it so the excursion train for students can leave the yard. One of them, Dewey, Ethan Suplee, makes the hasty decision to forego attaching the air hose between the locomotive and the remainder of the train's half-mile, km, length. The train's air brakes won't function as a result, the other hostler informs him, but Dewey assures him that they will hook them up after stopping the train on a different track. Barnes, a 28-year employee, learns that Coulson, who will be in control of the train, is only four months out of training when they meet beside their locomotive for the day. Coulson is reminded to ask questions if there is anything he is unsure of. They move the engine to the location where they will attach their train for the day by moving it across a bridge. Coulson finds out that a court hearing that morning didn't result in the lifting of a restraining order barring him from visiting his wife and children, as he had anticipated it would. Dewey activates the train's dynamic brakes in the locomotive cab at the fuller yard by turning the throttle to the maximum position, idle. Dewey notices that the train is not on the proper track as it approaches a switch and, against the other hostler's advice, climbs from the stationary vehicle to line it up correctly. Inside the 777, the throttle increases to its utmost speed as he does. He falls to the ground trying to reboard 777 since it has accelerated. Unmanned, the train departs the yard for the main line. The two depart Stanton for a zinc facility after experiencing a few minor hiccups at the yard as a result of Coulson's inexperience, including taking on more cars than they had in their orders. The hostlers in Fuller inform yardmaster Connie Hooper, Rosario Dawson, of the presence of a runaway train that is en route to collide with opposing traffic on the main line. She phones Ned, a welder for the railroad, and instructs him to meet the hostlers where they can get in his truck, catch the train, and stop it because she believes the dead man's switch will activate the brakes and it will be a coaster that stops a few miles from the yard. When they arrive, they discover that the train is overpowered and moving too quickly for them to catch. Every train on the main line must enter sidings, and Connie and the dispatchers try to do this. A head-on collision with the train carrying the schoolchildren is narrowly avoided. Connie's superior, Oscar Galvin, Kevin Dunn, calls her and inquires as to what is going on and what she is doing to address it. Because some of the tank cars on the runaway train contain molten phenol, a hazardous substance, she starts calling the state police to make sure the grade crossings on the line are secured because she hasn't yet found out how to stop the train. Barnes and Coulson aboard their train pick up the dispatcher's instruction to draw onto a siding. Barnes claims that because the train is too lengthy for the designated siding, they cannot utilize it. Instead, he inquires as to the clarity of a RIP track farther down the line. Galvin rejects Connie's plan to derail the railway in a sparsely inhabited farmland since it would be too expensive and the train could still be stopped. Another solution is approved at an urgent meeting of railway executives, but Galvin won't reveal what it is to Connie. The journey of the train is covered by reporters at intersections in minor towns, helicopters, and live television coverage of the event. A horse trailer that had become stuck on the tracks at one intersection is destroyed by the speeding train. Veteran engineer Judd Stewart is killed as a result of the company's failed plan to send a lash-up of two locomotives on the line ahead of the runaway to slow it down while another employee and former U.S. Marine Ryan Scott tries to board the runaway's locomotive from a helicopter. When the police realize the switch is near to the fuel tank, they abandon their second attempt to use close-range shotgun blasts to activate the safety switch on the locomotive's side at a grade crossing. The train is traveling at a speed of 71 miles per hour, 114 kilometers per hour, according to a state trooper's radar gun. As the runaway slams through the back of their vehicle, Barnes and Coulson get at the RIP track just in time. Barnes notices that the runaway's final car's coupler is unlocked as it passes. 
he makes the decision to pursue the runaway by reversing the locomotive. After some hesitation, Coulson follows him. Connie refuses to stop them despite Galvin's repeated requests. Another derailment attempt in a small town fails because the train is too heavy and moving too quickly. As the train reaches Stanton, where it will derail at its current pace, evacuations start as the railway crosses the town on an elevated curve. If it happens, a catastrophic environmental catastrophe might result from it falling into a farm of fuel oil tanks. The fugitive is caught up with by Barnes and Coulson. They start slowing the train down with their own brakes, but not enough when Coulson personally links their engine to the train, seriously hurting his foot in the process. In order to slow the train down sufficiently to avoid derailing, Barnes steps out onto the train and starts personally applying the brakes to each individual car. Their locomotive's brakes fail as a result, and the train accelerates once more. Coulson climbs into the back of Ned's truck as he overtakes the train. They arrive at the locomotive after traveling quickly, and Coulson is eventually able to enter the cab and halt the train there. Coulson's injured foot is attended to by the paramedics as Ned and the first responders pull up next to the now stalled 777. Coulson's wife rejoins their son when they arrive with him. Soon after, Connie shows up to congratulate them and Ned while he is managing the press conference alongside another AWVR employee in front of friends, family, and vehicles from first responders and media agencies. The promotion of Barnes and his subsequent retirement with full benefits are disclosed just before the closing credits. Coulson continues to live a happy life, has a second child on the way, heals from his wounds, and works for AWVR. While it is hinted that Galvin was fired for his subpar management of the incident, which resulted in Stewart's death and cost the railroad money and equipment, Connie is elevated to Galvin's vice president position. Ryan recovers completely, and Dewey, who was blamed for starting the incident, loses his job and later finds work in the fast food sector.